my daughter died last week. It was all my fault, of course. Let's get one thing straight. I'm not a good mother. I love my daughter more than life itself. But God help me. I am not a good mom. The thing that gets me the most, though, is how preventable the whole accident was. I was supposed to pick her up from the kindergarten, but the store was extra busy that afternoon, and somehow, I just forgot. They told me that she got tired of waiting. She thought she saw me across the road. And before any of the teachers could stop her, she bolted across the street. She didn't hear the truck coming. It was painless, at least, quick. That's how they tried to comfort me before they showed me her autopsy. The right side of her skull was completely caved in from where she had been hit, and the resulting impact had broken both her arms and legs. I don't blame the school. Kids are fast. Accidents happen. But I was devastated. I got nearly a month off on bereavement. I've never been close to the rest of my family ever since I dropped out of college to take care of her, and her dad didn't want anything to do with her. So, for the most part, it had always just been me and her. I've been in an awful place if I'm being completely honest. I tried to reach out. I even made a post on an online forum for other parents who have lost their children. A lot of the replies were just the standard condolences. I think it actually made me feel worse. That is, until someone sent me a strange private message. It wasn't long, just a single sentence. Give an offering to the thing in the mirror. I replied with a question, and I was almost ready to ignore it when they told me there was a way to see my daughter again. I know how this sounds. Normally, I wouldn't have taken it seriously either. But I was desperate and grieving. I would have tried anything. They gave me a list of instructions. If I followed them correctly, they said that the deceased would come back for three nights. That's how it worked. It was always three nights for some reason. Never more, never less. Just enough time to say goodbye. I was fine with that. I would have done it for three minutes. I won't include all the steps, but it's not difficult. For the ritual itself, all you need is a candle, a mirror, and a few drops of blood. And some patience, of course, but that's a given. That night, I turned off my bathroom light and waited. The first five minutes, all I saw was my own face staring back at me, gaunt and almost corpse-like in the candlelight. The flames cast strange shadows across my face, lengthening the backs under my eyes and painting my stringy blonde hair red. I looked awful, but the image in the mirror was still very clearly me. But then, inexplicably, it started to change. I've heard of this phenomenon before, of your brain playing tricks on you and warping the image in front of you. This wasn't it. I don't want to talk about what I saw in the mirror. I'm still not sure if I just imagined it. But I know that what I saw was not my face. And when I asked to speak to my daughter, the thing in the mirror replied. It was a success. The most difficult part of the ritual was done, and my daughter would return the next night. There were just two rules I had to follow. First, I wasn't allowed to look at her. Second, I couldn't let her into the house. I had to shut all my windows, draw the curtains, and lock the door before the sun went down. I didn't want to jeopardize any part of it, so I followed the directions to the letter. I closed all my windows and at sunset, I sat next to my door and waited. At first, I didn't hear anything. I thought that maybe the whole thing had just been a cruel joke, that the odd combination of sleep deprivation and desperation had caused me to hallucinate the whole thing. 
And then, it started. There was something outside, dragging itself across the gravel. I could hear the scraping sounds of pebbles skittering down my driveway as the thing slowly came closer and closer. And when I pressed my ear to the door, the wood was unnaturally cold. I didn't dare look as the last dying embers of sunlight faded from behind my curtains. I was startled by an abrupt knock. My heart was pounding so hard in my chest that I almost didn't hear it when my daughter called to me from the other side of the door. Mommy? That night was cathartic. The very first thing I told her was that I was so, so sorry. I really didn't mean it. I would have traded my life for hers in a heartbeat if only the thing in the mirror had allowed it. I stayed up for the entire night, and as the sun rose, I told her I loved her. I love you too, she said, and then she paused, hesitating. Mommy? She began, her voice quavering. I'm scared. I don't want to be by myself. Will you let me in? I almost sobbed right then. No, I whispered. I, I can't. I'm sorry, but I can't. She asked again. I felt awful. I almost agreed. But something told me to keep saying no until the sun had completely risen. When I no longer heard her voice, I stood up and pulled the curtains back. There was no signs of her, except for faint drag marks along my driveway. The second night, yesterday night, was when I really messed up. As morning broke, she asked me to come with her again. I tried to say no, I really did, but I couldn't. She was my only daughter. How could I leave her by herself again after what I'd done the first time? I stood up to unlock the door, but as I caught a glimpse of her through the keyhole, I froze. What I saw sent shivers down my spine. She was sprawled on the ground on all fours. Spider-like limbs bent at odd angles. Dirt clung to her clothing, and her skin was colorless like all the blood had been drained from it. But I knew something was wrong when I saw her head. It was caved in on the left side. Her hair matted to her skull with blood. Her left side. And when she grinned at me, teeth flecked red with blood. It was the mirror image of my daughter's smile. I ran and hid in my room until the sun rose. Here's the thing. The creature outside my door is not my daughter, I know that. It's just some strange, awful imitation of her. My daughter is dead. But I have one night left. And I don't know if I'm more scared of the thing outside, or the realization that I'll never see her again. The sun is setting. I can already hear something scuttling outside, pawing at my door. I think I forgot to lock it. And soon it will be night. Please don't knock. Please don't be my little girl. Don't be her. Because if I hear her again, begging me to let her in. I, I don't think I'll be able to say no.